Right. So welcome everyone to the February Smart Table Virtual User Group. And I'm Heather Lamb. I am your facilitator, your host for today. I'm leaving this little resource pack um, message up for just a couple more minutes. Um, we had some people that registered later than when I sent that out, and I apologize for the error that you received. Um, I tried something new and I didn't realize there was a cap to it. So hopefully you have the file at whichever way you got it. So welcome everyone to our session. All right, so we've been doing this for a while now and some of you are new to this. I'm glad that we have new folks and maybe some people I noticed some names on the list that I've recognized before. So who am I while we get started? And if you need, I can post that. It, look in the chat. If you didn't get that, look in your chat box. There's a link to the resources. There's two links. There's a shorter shortcut link, but sometimes districts will block that. So I just put the whole um, thing in there. It's a Dropbox um, link that should give you the option to download and save it. So this is a make it and take it session. And so we're going to basically be doing some things versus you just listening to me um, talk about stuff. So I am um, a smart education consultant out of Texas. So I apologize a couple of you. I don't know if you're joining us. Um, the time zone, so I'm in Texas, so I'm on Central Time. And so when you do this broad, I know we compete with different time zones, with schools, with meetings. The best thing about this program is that if you can't make it live, go ahead and record it. Or if your colleagues, let your colleagues know just for your purposes as well. We record the sessions and I've been posting them to um, I have a YouTube channel. So you can go back. Plus, the system will actually send you a link to um, the the recording that stays live and then I pull it down and I put it onto YouTube. So lots of different ways to learn cool information. Um, I do have all of that linked to my website heathersdigitaldashboard.com so if you are looking for that there's a resource tab at the top that says smart table resources and then you go down and there's the link to the YouTube channel. And I'm kind of revamping my website, so I'm going to figure out a good way to share the resources. I'm also on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, I'd love to um, connect with you that way. If you haven't been on Twitter, it's probably my most favorite way to develop my network of of resources um, without actually having ever met the people, but I learned so much and I love learning. Um, new ways to do just kind of the same thing, but people are so creative. So that's me, Heather Lamb 08, and my contact information. So if you have a question, um, let me know how I can help you. I've been doing this for a while now, and um, really, you know, what happens with the table in a classroom is it's, it's almost magical. It's, you know, the stories that, that teachers tell me that, you know, kids that are nonverbal, the, the kids that are drawn to it that aren't really participators, you know, those things. That's why I think the table is so powerful. All right. So with that, I want to let you know how you can participate. So there's a couple of ways. So you can, if you'd like to participate, let me put this into full screen here. If you want to participate by asking some questions, you can do that. Um, and then if you, the question box is in the, the panel. So type that question in there and I'll try to acknowledge your question. There's also a raise their hand feature. Um, I a couple of you had, Deidre, I think you had your hand raised, but I think it was because you didn't hear me. And then I accidentally put all the hands down. So if you had a question and you had your hand up, um, then, then put your hand back up. And you do need, I encourage you to have um, a wireless mic, or not a wireless mic, a headset, just because sometimes the computer, the feedback and everything it, um, gets a little much. But you don't have to have that. You can just talk into your computer if you would like to to share. So moving forward, I hope that we have some people that share. Um, so those are a couple of options if you have questions. I try to paste this enough that you'll be able to get the information and practice with me in this, in this particular kind of session. It is a make it and take it, so I've sent those files out that will put them together. So, so right now everyone's muted, but I'll be watching to see if you do have a question. So if you do have a question, put that in that question box um, and let me know if if there's anything that I can help you with. 
what else do I want to tell you? So why do we do this? Basically, you know, um, it's really to learn from each other, to learn from me. I'm very fortunate in that I get to go um, to many places that have smart tables, but I also connect with people virtually. And I always tell, say, tell me your story. Tell me what you're doing with your table. How does it fit into your classroom? You know, give me that, that information. So learning from each other is so powerful. That's why I'm on Twitter as well. Um, but then we want to build skills and techniques so that we're learning where those resources are and how to better maybe be be a facilitator of not just consuming but creating information. Sharing best practices, things that I never thought of. Um, people share things and I want to share them with you guys. And then networking. So there's a lot of people that sign up for this and, and so you're able to network. I am able to network but also I, I use this as, a, as kind of a platform because in the coming months I'm going to really tap into you guys and um, hopefully I'll get some people that will I'll invite to share. I would love for you to share what you're doing with your table because I'm um, I do have a table that's in my living room, but I'm not in the classroom um, to use it. So, so that's one of those things that, that makes this, this platform so powerful. So what are we going to do today? Well, I've given my introductions. I've talked to you about the purposes, and we're going to go into some, that resource pack. So we're going to use that resource pack, and I'm just going to give you some ideas and some different ways to maybe think about weight um, creating for the table. And then just, I've already reminded you of my website, but then we're going to look at the smart exchange and the training and professional development that's available. Just a quick reminder, because the, the make it and take it is probably the meat that what you're most interested in. Right. So just just some because everybody that's on here is probably at different levels. I mean, I'm looking at some of these names and you're all at different levels. So I want to do some reminders about some things. So we're going to look at backgrounds and images and this file kind of um, shows you some things that you can do as the table evolves some different features happen so that we have a cropping feature. It's not a resizing feature, but it's a cropping feature, which was phenomenal because we used to have to do many more um, very heavy labor-intensive things to get images. We used to, our backgrounds, we used to have to do some things with our backgrounds. So pretty much really easy as you're going to see. So I just wanted to remind you, you can take, you can drag and drop from notebook files and from image files. So that's a real neat feature that you can drag and drop images and then also reminding you that images can come from the smart exchange so we'll when we get into the toolkit we'll kind of look at that a little deeper so let's create so I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time going over a lot of the the ins and outs but I wanted you to really let's talk about the creating so what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to so we're going to actually get out of smart notebook now one thing that I'll tell you while I have this before I forget is if you are not a smart notebook user the table every table comes with a license of smart notebook because smart notebook is one of our default applications so I, I'm going to talk when we go to the Smart Exchange about making sure about the table tool, the table activity packs. But the, every table has the ability. You have the license, even if you don't have a smart board. You do have. You can request a license to put Smart Notebook on your computer so that you can create with Smart Notebook or modify a lesson that you can get from the Smart Exchange, which is our portal of thousands and thousands of lessons. So you can get that even if you're not a smart, if you don't have a smart board. So you can go and in the under the registration page of our of our um, website. So if I go to let me let's see if I can go to, I'm just going to open up Internet Explorer. Let's have a couple of windows open here. So if I go to our website, um, smarttech.com, and I go to at the top, so we'll see how fast this is going to open. So if I go to the website and I go to support underneath product registration or activation, 
So this is where that you can go and you can retrieve and you can get where you can, you can register your smart table, but you can also retrieve a product key. So if you, if you need that, this is where you can get that singular product key for or a product key for, for you guys that don't have smart, um, smart boards in your classroom. So that's really good to know um, because it gives you another layer of development. So that our website is smarttech.com and so I went to the support tab. So in, let me minimize this and let's talk about the resources that are in your resource pack. So let me open this up and let's, let me go back a, fold, a couple of folders. So let's talk about what's in this resource pack. So I've got some backgrounds that I'm going to use today. I downloaded, you know, I thought, well, February is kind of slipping by, which is crazy, but let's focus on some March things that maybe you might be able to use at the first of March. So I downloaded a couple of uh, table toolkit or table activity packs. So I found off the exchange and I'll show you where I got those, but I downloaded those and put you put those in your resource pack. Um, I'm going to talk about this hot spaces or hot spots activity and then we're going to build something very similar. And then I've got a little shamrocks counting page that a background that we're going to use. So those are the resources that we're going to start with today. All right. So to do that, um, if you want you can, so a couple of ways you can do this. You could open up, which I did, that chronological order, hotspots at only activity. So if you'll double click on that little green icon, if you're familiar with Smart Notebook, you'll know that Smart Notebook is a blue icon and the table is a green icon. So I know that that is a little green icon for the Smart um, Table. And then when I do that, I'm gonna, it's going to open up your toolkit. Now the toolkit is separate than notebook. And so here's my toolkit. So let's just do a quick review because some of you may be brand new to this. So as a review, these are my new and open save all, save as. So if I find something on the exchange that I want to keep the original, that's when I might do a save as. Or if I might scaffold something and say, oh, I'm going to start off with with a couple of layers, but I'm going to keep my original and then I'm going to save it as a Monday activity or a Tuesday activity. So I might do it that way. So then I've got a quick access to the Smart Exchange from the online activity packs right here, that, sec that tab. I'm going to go back. I'm not going to open that right now, but if you clicked on it, you'll see that it says the Smart Exchange. I'm going to go back to the Home tab and then notice that this this, I have one application. So when I'm creating my activity pack, so all of the activity pack is kind of the top layer. Within the activity pack, there's applications. So here's my applications over on this side. Addition, Addition Plus, Hot Spaces, Hot Spots, Media, Multiple Choice, Smart Notebook, and Paint and Puzzles. So notice these are my applications. If I click on, so I've got a couple of ways that I can open this. I've got hot spots right here, or I've got a tab at the top. Same thing. So it doesn't matter how I get there. I could click here. You know, another trick is when you're building, you could even click on the little um, dots, and that takes you to your application. So that's kind of a tip for some of you. Then... If I look at this, if I kind of even bring this to a further down another layer. So I've got step one. So I'm, I'm, this is already built. So we're going to dissect it, and then we're going to build something on our own. So you can kind of see how you can do this. So step one says to create an activity. Well, if you're looking at this, there's one, two, three, four different activities within that application. So you can have many. So that's how many times the kids will be working on the table. Then I've got one, this is called HS1. Not really sure what that is, stands for, but I could always change it if I wanted to. And if I said, oh, I want this to be numbers, I could change that if I wanted to. It doesn't, it, make it yours. So then I, when, after I do that, see now it says numbers there which makes more sense than HS1 and 2 and 3 and 4, or at least to me. If you look down in the bottom, in a minute we're going to do this. We're going to create our own background. The background is everything that doesn't move. So think of this, these activity packs as built-in layers. So this swirl thing, 
that's right here, that swirl is, is the layer, is the bottom layer. And then these are movable objects that's the next layer. So the swirl doesn't move. It's, it stays static. It doesn't move. And then I've got these little labels that will move. So I see when it's, so that's step one. Step two, notice that we're going to have a couple of different ways to get backgrounds. We can have, go to the folder, which I've given you. We can actually use an import from the gallery. I can copy and paste things as well. So if I have a folder that maybe has kids' pictures in it or something, then I can use, then I can use that. Oh, did I say, oh, hot spots. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> HS, I'm just, that's just blew me away. And Amanda, thank you for sharing that. So hot spots one, two, and three, and four. Hmm, that would have been simple enough. <laughs> All right, so um, going on forward, so I've got my background. A lot of times what I have teachers that want to do is they want to resize backgrounds and they want to do things to backgrounds. Once you set a background, it's the way it is. And we're going to see a couple of examples that I created to help you understand that. So I have a couple of different ways to set up my activities. So the first one is called labels. So notice these are labels. So when I click on here, they can move around. These are labels. We're going to create some labels. I also can add pictures from the gallery. I can import from a file here. I can copy and I can delete. A cool thing about the table is don't forget that it has sounds. So if you've got some students that are non-readers and you want to say, well, this is, they said, well, is this a 9 or is this a 6? You can click on that little box right there and you can actually add some audio. So I could have some sounds that I already created. So I could import that if I wanted to. I could have the, the table read or spell those things. But I like the import feature because it allows me to bring in sounds that I from other locations. Or if I click on that, so notice that I have selected the number six, I get a couple of options. I can record my own sound or I can bring it in. So Susan, you have a good question. Does this, does this work for the smart board also or just the smart table? So that's a great question. Um, the benefit of the smart table is that you've got the multi-touch, multi-user environment. So what I could do is if I have a smart board, a great thing to do would be to model the activities that would be on the table, but you would probably only have a singular touch is what I'm, so you could model these and they would move. Some of them do things better on, on, or they don't do things better, they are, you're able to model them better. Um, they're, they don't go through all the same motions. But the benefit of the table is that multi-user, multi-touch, so that I can have those conversations and I can share knowledge. So it can, they can work on the table and work on the smart board, but they work best in in that environment on the table. So I hope I answered that. So they you can show them. I've I've demonstrated before um, a, an activity pack that the kids will do and then when they get to the table they're kind of self-directed. All right. So back to that is so the number six, so I could click on this little microphone and I could click and I can record my voice saying six or if I'm um, in EL, ELL or bilingual classroom, I could say it in Spanish, so you, that allows you some other layers as well. So, or you could bring in something that if you had a song or something that you wanted, you could bring that in. So that, this is, these are our kind of our first steps. So there's one more piece that some of the applications have that I wanted to um, make sure that you understand. So when we build one of these, you're going to kind of get it. So over here where it says show, it says show the end position or show the start position. So in hot spots, hot spots, the, the end position has a little yellow dot on it. You probably see I don't have any yellow dots. But watch what happens when I move and I click on the start position. So there's the start. Okay, so the, so see they're they're on the swirl, but they're really not in order. I don't think. Nope, they're not in order, right? 
So I've got this, and I, they're not in order. I could even move them over. I kind of like that better. So if I have like a little pot. So this is my start. When I start this application and this activity, they're going to start in kind of a little pot over to the side of the swirl. I could do it anyway, but this will give you an idea. And then where do they end? Those are the right. So the last thing is, is I say to myself, and Susan, this kind of, this kind of goes back. So if I wanted to model this, I wanted to see what it's going to be like on the table. Down in the bottom right-hand corner, now make sure that whatever you're on, that you've got your screen kind of maximized so that you're not only seeing parts. So like, don't, don't have it like this. Have it maximized up. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. All right, so I've got my screen. Well, let's see, my computer. Let's think. Oh, there we go. Just had a little delay there. And down in the bottom right-hand corner, there's a preview button. Whoops. I think it's catching up to me. Hmm. So maybe you're having some better luck than I am. But there's a preview button down in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Just didn't want to do that right. So if I click on the preview, it's going to go to kind of a, it's called a local host, and it'll do this on both the Mac and the Windows. And so, let's see, it's trying. So what's going to happen is it's going to model and show you, oh, oopsie. Okay, so I've got, let me pull this over because, um, let's see if I can get this to go. So I'm actually, oh, there we go. I'm, I'm extending my screen, so it a couple of things kind of went all a, a little over that I didn't want to. But you can see what's happened is right here, then, then if I click on this, this is what's going to happen on the table. So notice the yellow dots. The yellow dots are, signify that, that in position. So where I, if I put the one like here, it turns orange. If I take and I put the three here, it's, it's three is good. But let's see if I try to put the 10 here, nothing happens. So those yellow dots signify this, this in position is what's happening. I can flick forward and backward so I had four hot spaces or hot spots activities so I can click through. Here's another. Notice that this I the start is this the start they just kind of slung out. I might want to change those. So I can forward front and back. So here's the same thing. I would probably fix those and then I could save them and use them. This one's nice because this is if you ever do the life cycle of a frog. So I'm going to, the, the way to get out of this is I can click on that little yell, uh, that little box um, that, little, that looks like the arrow's going in. I can click or I can hit the escape button. So that's how I can get out of, out of that. So that's, that's one way. And see, notice if I go back, so here's the end positions. There's the start position. So on that um, HS2, Notice that these, so there's the start, so I'm going to move those because I didn't want those to start like right, like on top of my swirl. See how I can adapt this? So if you find something and you say, gosh, I wish I could change, these are just labels. So if you said, oh, I like this idea, but I don't want that to say Saturday. Maybe I'm doing English and Spanish or something. I can double click on those and I can type my own net word, or I can put Heather in there. So those are called labels. So the labels are up at the top. So I can have pictures, or I can press on here, and there it says label eight. So if I wanted to add something else to another date or whatever I want to it. So hopefully that makes sense. So you can fix those. These are labels. I can just double click on them. If I wanted a picture in here, I could go, if I'm on the internet, I can click on the little, it looks like a little uh, portrait, it's the import from the gallery, so if you're connected to the internet, you have instant access to the Smart Exchange, all the gallery collections. So if I said, ooh, I'm going to do a frog, and I'm not really doing it on here, but we're going to make something. So if I search, so I clicked on that, so if I cancel out of here, if you're following along, so I'm in this little activity, and you know I might want to get rid of these. 
So I'm going to, I can move those, I could delete those. I'm just going to move them over to the side for right now. All right. So I'm going to click and I'm going to type frog in here and I'm going to search. Or maybe to go along with what I'm doing, what happens if I type search Monday? I'm just kind of curious. Mm, it says it has a bunch of stuff, but it has calendars. So that's not really what I want. Maybe I'm going to search. Let's see what happens when I search the letter M. Oh, maybe I want to find M's for Monday. So I like that, whatever that little um, M is, like a Scrabble or a key. So if I click on that, so that's the one I want, and I click OK, watch what's going to happen. Remember that image that I showed you in that notebook file where you could crop? Well, this is where it's cropping. So see, I could crop something, or I can say, oh, I want to move that, because though it was kind of over like that, I'm going to make that bigger. And I'm going to click OK. There's my letter M. And so there's, I could say, oh, if I want it to start over here, where do I want it to end? I want it to end maybe up here. So just to give you an idea. All right. So that's the same thing. That's how you get these pictures in here. Those, you know, maybe I didn't like that frog right there. Maybe I want a cuter frog. I could delete that out of here, and I could type frog. And maybe I can find a funnier frog or a cuter frog. Oh, look at that. But that doesn't really go with mine. It's cute, but if I'm trying to be really practical. So maybe I want, let's see what other frogs are in here. Maybe this one right here and click OK. Maybe that was the same one and click OK. Yeah, I think that looks like almost the same one. It looks a little greener. All right, so that, so if I say, oh, where did I want those to start? I could move them up, and then where do I want them to finish? Where do I want those yellow dots? Then I'm going to end it right there. Now, another question that people will say is, hmm, Heather, what if I wanted to type some words in here, like put the life cycle of a frog? You would need to do that in your background before you bring it over. So we're going to look at that. All right. So hopefully that kind of gave you an overview of how to set up a hotspots. You know, hotspots can be really, you could put spots on anything. If you have a picture and you say, oh, I want you to identify the parts of the school. Or, you know, and this is the library. So you have a picture that's your background, and then you want them to move things around. Maybe you want them to do a one-to-one -one relationship where you have objects that they have to count and they have to find the right answer. So if I have six objects that I count and I move it to the number six or vice versa. So that's those are some ideas. You can also get really good ideas from the Smart Exchange. So let's look for a second. Do you see the icon right here? The little green um, icon, that is the icon, that's the circle for hotspots. So anytime you see that in when you start previewing, you say, oh, that's a hotspots activity. Here's also a good example of a good background. Somebody created this, they chose a purple background and they put numbers. This was all created before they even got it to the toolkit. This looks like word art. So we're going to look at that. And we, I'm not going to delve really deep into a lot of these because I wanted to kind of step back and make sure some, you understand some of the fundamentals. So what I'm going to do is let's start a new activity pack. So to do that, I'm, I'm in this one, and I'm going to click New. And it's going to say, do you, do you want to save your work? Well, you can. If you want to, you can save it. If I did that, I would choose Save As so I didn't mess up. But you can always go download the file. So, But I'm not going to save this right now. So if you don't want to, that's good for me. So if you, I'm going to say, don't save it. But I'm going to start with a fresh, I'm going to start with a fresh activity pack. So I've got the green background. The green is the default. 
looking at it, if there's nothing there, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to say, okay, we need some applications. And today, basically, we're going to work in that hot, well, we're going to do hot spaces and we're going to um, look at hot spots. So those are kind of our two things that we're going to look at. So I'm going to have, I'm going to click on hot spots and I'm going to click on hot spaces. And these kind of worked, work very, very similar. So notice I have two dots right here, and I have two tabs right here. If I wanted a background here, let's just say we wanted a background, and I don't want any words on it, I just want a fun background. Um, I'm going to go to my import, so if you're listening along and following along, we've got our two tabs. I'm just going to create and or go look and find something from the Smart Exchange, and I'm going to type in here background, just to see what's in there. So I went to the Smart Exchange. And I'm just going to type, and ooh, look at that one. That's kind of a cool one. Here's a purple background that's kind of neat. Hmm, I kind of like that purple background. Hopefully that's what showed up on your screen. I'm going to click OK. It's going to say, oh, that's kind of fun. It's going to say, well, what do you want to do? Well, there's really nothing in there, so I don't need to crop it or do anything. I'm just going to click OK. Oh, that, well, that looks like snowflakes, but that's okay. We don't have a lot of snow in Texas, although we have had some, but we don't have a whole lot. But for today's purposes, that works great for me. What I, if I wanted words on it, I would need to do the words and first and then bring it over, but we'll, we'll, I just wanted to add some color to it. So that works good. The other thing that I wanted to tell you is that down at the bottom, there are some instructions. So when you have the instructions, the instructions are really, you have to think of it as instructions for the entire activity pack. So if your focus is letters or your focus is numbers, you might say something like, in, um, work out the number problems, or let's learn about the letter J. So all of your activities have that theme of the letter J. So when you start thinking about um, activity packs and how you're developing, if you do think of themes, it kind of makes it easier. You can put some audio here as well. If you wanted to record your voice saying, let's learn about the letter J, that's going to happen right when you turn, when you start the application or start the activity pack. I apologize. When you start the app, um, activity pack, it's going to say that. It won't repeat that again. So instructions are kind of a one time and then they don't repeat themselves. So you might want to consider that when you use them. Um, because if you have like the letter J and the letter K and the letter L, that one instruction is going to, you could say, let's learn about letters versus let's learn about letter J, but then you have a K and an L act, um, activity that goes in, along with it. So I think I've got my application selected. I've got my background selected. If I wanted to change that background, I could delete it and, and use the default and would go back to the green. So pretty easy to do. I can copy and paste those things in. I can have a background, and I'm going to show you. I made a background in PowerPoint. That's an easy way to make a background as well, but that's for something else. So let's go to Hot Spots. So I clicked on the Hot Spots tab, or I could have clicked on the circle. So let's name this. Let's name this. Um, days of the week, or just, yeah, let's do days of the week, just to get us started. So that's my first activity. If I wanted another activity, I can do the plus and say um, numbers, just something general. So I've got two activities in my application. So the application is hotspots, and I've got two activities. So I need a background. So notice down in this bottom left-hand corner, there says, says step two, create the background. Well, I gave you some backgrounds in that folder. You know that resource pack folder? I have a folder called backgrounds. So there's a couple of ways that you can bring backgrounds there. I could, so I'm going to use the swirl 
just as a, um, just to start off with. So we're going to use this one swirl. So it's the swirl zero one. So I could copy it and then I could paste it. That's one way to bring a background in. Another way is from the toolkit, I can click on the folder and I can go to, so if I click on that folder and then I go, oh, well there's my background. Remember that wherever you saved it, mine's going right where I told it to go, but you might have to search and go up here and find the folder. Um, that and go locate that. So mine went straight there. I thought it was going to have to locate it. Notice the different file types. It will use JPEGs. I would stay away from GIFs. GIFs are animated um, and they don't do any animation right now. PNGs are just a little cleaner, um, but JPEGs is the traditional thing that people use. Bitmaps, all of these will work, but if you don't know what those are, I would stick with JPEGs. So I'm going to click on the backgrounds folder and then click on that um, swirl. Make sure that, so I'm going to cancel that, because I have a lot of people that will do it from here, like click on that folder. You don't want to click on that folder. You want to click on the background folder, because otherwise you're going to have an object that's going to circle around. So I'm going to click on that. Here is, this is a really good example of what's happening. So notice that this will, this actually was kind of cutting off the swirl. Well, I want the whole swirl. So previously we had to do all this and it was just a little kind of tricky. So the, this will crop. So if I said, oh, I only want that part of the swirl, I could easily do that. But here is the cropped image. And then I'm going to click OK. And so watch what's going to happen. It's over here because that's where my background is. But then now this is going to be that first layer. So there's my background. Easy, easy. So that's the one I'm going to use for, I put it under numbers. If I said, ooh, I don't want that under numbers. I want that under days of the week. I could click right here under days of the week, repeat those steps, double click on that. It's always going to bring up that cropping when you do this. Click OK. And now I have an under days of the week. If I wanted to do numbers with that other background, so I clicked on numbers, go down to my folder. Here's a blue background that has a swirl. Oh, and that swirl already has some, oh, it has numbers on there. That's why I put numbers there. So this is like your starting and your end point. So these were already preset. Kind of did that intentionally. So, all right, I don't see any more questions right now, so unless, let me, nope, I guess you're following along, listening intently. All right, so let's go back to the top one, days of the week. So let's, let's do this, let's add some labels, just so you can see the process. It's really, really repetitive, so once you do this a few times, you think, gosh, the toolkit looks a little ominous that, you know, gosh, there's so many steps, but once you start, you'll see, and I know that probably many of the you guys that are in here have done this, and it, you know that it does become very repetitive, and then you start thinking outside the box. So we're just going to add some labels so you can see how to do this, and then we're going to, the numbers, we're going to do something a little different. So I'm going to go to label. There's my first label. So if I have, my theme is days of the week. So this is also something to remember. When you create smart table, well, let's start with smart boards, because Susan asked about the smart board. So smart board, when you create lessons, you create from a top down. And everything, you kind of do that like you're reading a book from the top down. When you create activities or when you find activities, you'll notice that they are created in a 360 degree environment. So you might have a student that's at the top of the table or you might have one. So you're going to have students standing and looking down. So you notice, so when I work with teachers, sometimes they don't like that that goes upside down. Well, it does because for that student, that's on this side of the table, that's how they read. If you don't do that, all your kids will radiate to one side of the table. So that's that, the, the, my, kind of my, I call them the A-type people, I can see kind of the stress, because they don't like that upside down. I think, think of 360, keep that in your mind. So you could type 
when it's down here so that you can actually see it. So I've got label. I'm going to double click. If you click off of that and you can't get it to you can't get that to double click again, you can left click and highlight backwards. Let's see if I can do that. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's just going to let me do that. So days of the week I have Monday. So that's my first label. And you know, I know that I'm going to have seven. So I'm just going to go ahead and click label, 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 label. Let's see, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I need Sunday. So, and it doesn't matter. You could do label seven as Tuesday. doesn't really matter. And then I have Wednesday. So if you're following along, Wednesday. So it's notice I've got those, and I can move those down if I want. I'm just going to move them around because, you know, it's, I'm, I haven't, I'm just getting all my organization done. Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Okay. All right, perfect. Yay, Susan. She loves that. Um, it's just, it's pretty easy. So you could do, you know, maybe you have kids that, you know, that have to line up and you put a line or you, the swirl is the line and you say, okay, we're going to put the kids in alphabetical order or something. You know, think about that. All right, so now look at my, look at my show. So I've got this. I could, if, but I've got more, I've got more activities. So it, I just might want to say this is a sorting activity because remember, it's going to be a general statement. So I've got days of the week. So I'm going to say, where is my start position? So I want these to start. I just kind of like them. I don't like them clumped. The, you may have a personal preference where you want to put them, and that is totally cool. So I've got them over here as my start position. I'm going to click on end position. And now I'm going to have them, um, you know, I could start from the end inside so I guess I could or I could do it from this way but maybe it's better I'm gonna put them right here Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday there's my little activity I can preview it if I preview it, it's going to go into that mode. So let me drag this back over here. And then remember that if I do this, um, I can to see what it's going to look like on the table, I can click on that little box on the side, and this is what it's going to look. And see, the in position is creates that little yellow. Um, circle. So let's see, that's going to be Friday. Let's see if that's right. It's <gasps> right. So you can, this is, so going back to your question, Susan, or comment that, you, so I could model this and so that I have some real independent um, stuff going on in my table. So I'm going to escape out of that and let me move that back over here. So uh, um, then if I went to numbers, so I think hopefully you've got that. If I go to numbers, so with the numbers activity, I have the 1 and the 10. So this time I'm going to search in the gallery because there's some really fun numbers that I like to use on the table. So when I click, if I search in here magnets, I think let me try magnet numbers. I never remember what they put these as. Oh, it doesn't like that. So let's do just magnets. I might have to move through because those are, but I'm going to move and then I'll show you what I'm looking for. So let's do, oh, there they are. See these fun little numbers right here? Those are the numbers that I'm looking for. So I'm going to, I know that I'm going to, I don't need a one, but I do need a number two. So I searched magnets and I did the next until I got to that. So I'm going to click number two. It'll let me crop it. So I'm going to repeat those steps 
go to my gallery, and luckily it stays on that page. I'm going to need a number six, so I don't really have to do them in order. Number seven, I think, here's what's kind of cool, I think if I click, if, I, if you're on a computer that allows you to do that, I can shift and click, I, oh no, I guess I can't, I have to select one. Let's see, maybe I can control, nope, I have to, I thought I could do both of them. I always try to push those things. Now, nine is going to be one of those things that, you know, that's, that's the challenge with the nine. Um, let's see, I have, I need eight. So, and there's letter magnets, too. Okay, so let's go, and let's go to the next. See the letter? Aren't those fun? I like those a lot. They're just a little more... I don't know, they just look cuter and fun. All right, so let's see. I think I've got all that I need. Let's see if where I'm at. So great question, Patricia. You guys are thinking. So she, Patricia says, how do you resize those numbers? So unfortunately, you can't resize the numbers. So there are some limitations on it. So I might have to readjust some things. So that's a great question. Right now, the toolkit has some limitations, but you can't resize those. If I wanted to, um, that's why sometimes I use the labels. If I want the small um, numbers, they're not as cute, but you, but that's just the limitations of, of the toolkit right now. So you can't resize them. Great question, though. You can um, on um, you. So yeah, the tool. I was trying to think of a way, but the toolkit on on this um, the, with the hot spots, they're pretty much this shape on here is what you get when you use objects. So that's a great question, though. So that's why maybe I would use a hot space instead of. So I'm going to show you that just to, I'm not going to do a lot with it. I'm just going to show you because it works a lot, but there's a couple little, little things. I'm going to show you with the background. So I'm going to do my start position. So I'm going to move those up. I was kind of moving them, but I was in the wrong thing. I do that all the time. I start moving things and then I look and say, oh, I'm in the end position, not the start position. So you have to tell it, don't make, don't make the mistake I have many times and start, have the start and the end go at the same place. So there's my start, here's my end, so let's see, I would have my two, see that's kind of, that might not be, this might not be the best for this activity, these numbers might not be the best, but Let's see, I think that was the um, nine. Doesn't really matter because you will tell it. Let's see, yeah, I'm going to run out of space. I'm going to have to move those around. Slide those over just a little bit. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there we go. So hopefully you, got, you found out that, and then I could preview it. I think you got the preview. If I wanted to, I could add sounds to those numbers individually if you needed that auditory support. So each one of those numbers can have sound to it. So let's um, switch gears because we're getting down kind of to the end. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left, and um, I want to I want to show you how I make backgrounds and how I do some of the objects that I do inside of the to use in the in the toolkit. So inside of the folder, there is a. Uh, PowerPoint background. If you just want to watch me, that's okay, but I'm just going to show you how I made this background. It's a PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, um, or let me step back, so you can make backgrounds. If, you have, if you're familiar with Smart Notebook, you can make backgrounds in Smart Notebook, 
and just um, save them as a JPEG. So you can do a file and export and save them as a JPEG. That's an option. You can make backgrounds from notebook and you can drag the whole page over um, to be a, a background. So notebook works really good. You do have some flexibility with that. Um, you can also use paint to make backgrounds. You could use, if you've got an image, um, an image resource that you use to make backgrounds, use that. You can have pictures be backgrounds. So whatever is good for you, um, PowerPoint is a really easy way. This is a trick that you may not know about, but I gave you, this is kind of a template for you. So you could change this up. So this is my, this is my um, PowerPoint. It's kind of being a little, there we go. So this is my PowerPoint that I made just as a template. So remember when we think the table, we have a 360 degree environment. So I put a little text box here that you could type your own, um, the title of whatever your activity is. So this is my background that's going to go into my toolkit. These are my boxes that I'm going to use for a hot space activity. And I like to put these because it gives me a guide. You know, you can resize these. These are just, you know, shapes and things. So you can do whatever you want in backgrounds. Um, I changed the color, so I did this. I went to the colors, and I went to the shape fill, and I chose some colors. So these, so, so I was going to do a one-to-one -one relationship is how I changed the colors. I could type in a text box and add words to this. So you have some flexibility. So here's what PowerPoint will allow you to do. When I come to the, now I'm running window, um, Office 2007, but um, how to drag, yeah, I can. I'll show you how to drag that. That's a good question, Patricia. Sorry, I'm looking, I'm trying to keep up. When I do this by myself, which I do a lot, I'm trying to keep up with everything, so keep those good questions coming. So um, with PowerPoint, I can take this and I'm going to save as. So I'm in PowerPoint 2007. I think it's the same steps in the earlier versions, but I'm going to show you. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to, what I previously had to do in my other version is I had to save it as a PowerPoint presentation, but I, um, it, I didn't save it as a PowerPoint. I saved it as a JPEG. With Office 2007, and I don't know, I can't remember if the earlier versions allow this, um, you can save, it says save as other formats. So when I click on that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prompt me. So if, you, if you're running an earlier version or... You know, if you're on a Mac and you have some great program, go for it. But notice that, so if I do a file save as, it's the same steps. I'm going to name it. But notice, I don't want a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to click on this Dropbox. Did you know that you had all these options? And there is the one I'm looking for, a JPEG. You could make all your backgrounds, and when you click on that, it's going to say, I'm going to say save. And it's going to say to me, ooh, do you want every slide or the current slide? So I could get all my backgrounds ready to go, and I could do all of them at one kind of click, 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 and I have all my fun backgrounds. So I made a background. I wanted to give you those steps. This is in PowerPoint. I made a background for you. It's this one right here. See how I, I took the colors and I added the colors in here. So I'll show you. So this is a JPEG. So see how I changed the colors and I changed it to matching colors. I've got it on both sides just because I could have put it up here, but as long as it's on both sides and not just at the top, it could be at the top and the bottom. But you remember, like, see how I flipped them out because that kid that's sitting over on that, that right or that's standing onto the right side of the table is going to see this one. The kid that's standing on the left side of the table is going to see that one. So I'm going to take that, and you know what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to just, um, I can't, well, I'll make it easy for you guys. Let's, let me go back to my, I was going to say copy it. So let's go back, but I need to get into my hot space activity. So if I go here, I'm going to call this colors or match, I'll just call it colors, that's good. It doesn't matter because it's not going to show up anywhere. I'm going to create my background, 
And so let's look at hot spaces for a second. So we're going to, if you see it's got some of the same things as hot spots. One of the things that it has is this little button right down below the background. It says enable visual feedback. So what that means is hot spaces, when the kids, what we noticed early on is the kids would just drag over the stuff into the box and they would see what I call the marching ants. And you know what? They didn't really pay attention to what was happening. So, so this visual feedback, if you want them to get all of the pieces into the location and then when they get them right, then they get the validation, you would deselect that. If you want to, as they drag over something, that it's right, if you want that visual feedback, then you would turn that on. So that way you have a choice. Do you want them to get all the stuff there, and then when they get it all right, then they get the, the feedback, or do you want it, them to get immediate feedback? You're going to have to decide with your learners. So um, to do this, I'm going to go to my folder to get that background. Click on that matching colors. I don't need to really do anything. If I wanted to, I could resize this a little bit just to make it a little, see how that's resizing? Just to make it more in the center. Click OK. Oh, and you know what I did? See, I have that in the wrong place. I did it from up here, and I needed to do it down here. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's what happens when you do it wrong. So if you're not in the background, if you're not in the background piece, go back to the background. Sorry, I did exactly what I said that, I, that you might do. And I'm going to click, do that same thing, resize, so it's good practice. And I'll click OK. Now I have my activity in there. So the other thing that's different with hot spaces is that I need a space that's hot. So this is, I'm going to recommend that, I'm going to show you and then I'm going to recommend that you go back and you practice this. So I'm going to kind of give you, this is your define your space. So the arrow is, is like the starting point, like smart notebook. But to do the, the space, I have a rectangle or a square. I'm going to start and put my little arrow in the, the corner that I want my space to start, and I'm just going to drag this across. And there's my space. Now what's cool about this is you can't resize it once you get there, but if you don't get it perfectly lined up, you can move it around. You can't resize it. If you get it, if you don't, if you're not successful the first time, just click on it, delete it, and start over. So I do that, get right where I want to have it drag it across, go back to my arrow, otherwise you'll get a lot of boxes there. And then it works the same way. So if I have something that's, I'm going to type here, oh, I'm going to use the letter B because that's green because I was right there for time. There's my letter B. And then I have my start and my end position. So if I say, well, I want it to end here, where do I want it to start? Maybe I want to have a pot right in the center. And that's how you kind of create. So Patricia, how to do background. So let's just, I'm going to open up my notebook file. And I'm just going to pull something over um, that I could use. So here's what I would do. So I create a notebook. I'm going to minimize, and I'm going to, well, not minimize, but I'm going to move. So I have, I want to have two, like two files open. So if I say to, if I say, you know, I want this as my background, just for, just for the purposes of this. So you make a background in notebook. Let's see if it's going to, oh, there we go. All right. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple of things. So my computer is really dragging. So I'm going to move this over, and I'm going to move my pages. So if you're not familiar with notebook, this might be a little tricky. But I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take this file right here, and rather than saving it, I could export it out. But here's the trick. I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to drag, and I'm going to drop it. So I left clicked, and when I drag and drop, it's going to bring up that, that cropping, 
I'm going to click OK. Maybe I only want, look at this. Look how cool this is going to be. Great example. I'm thank, glad you asked that. I only want that smart logo. See how I took that? And I'm going to click. Let me get this over here. Oh, that's perfect. And now there's my background. Easy, easy. So I just opened up my notebook file. That's one way. I could export, or, or I could, I think I can export it. Let's see. As, yep, I could export my notebook file as an image file if I wanted to. But, you know, I might only want that one page out of a notebook file because it's reinforcement. So if you saw what I did, I just made my, my notebook file, and I have kind of two layers going on, and I drag and drop it. You can do that from your images as well. If you have an image folder, you can do that as well. All right. Patricia, I hope that answered your question. Um, we are kind of down past 5 o'clock. I apologize. But I hope that it, that helped you to be able to create some activity packs. Don't forget that, that when you save your files, that you want to save them and then you'll choose them. So when you save and you name your files, think about the naming conventions. And then when you choose it, you'll, draw, you'll put it on your USB, add it to the table, and then choose it and practice with it. Don't forget um, um, that the Smart Exchange, if you're on the Smart Exchange, and I'm just going to just kind of show you this, I'm going to share this file out with everyone. Um, so I'm going to share this file. I'll send a follow-up and I'll send this file out. I think that's the easiest way, and I'm going to be posting. Don't forget that you want to download Smart Table Activity Packs. I gave you two. I just searched March, and I gave you a two. I gave you two. Um, that I, when I searched March and Green, I think. So I gave you two that you might want to try. But don't forget that you want Smart Table Activity Packs, not Smart Notebook, not anything else. The Table Activity Packs are what you want to load. There are some videos that are on my YouTube channel, the Smart Table Friend. And I'm going to hold off the next session. Um, if, you've seen our, if you've seen our website, um, you know that Kevin had um, a new classmate, and Kevin's new classmate is we have a new smart table. So I'm going to, I'm not going to set the date yet, um, but be watching. I will send out an email to everyone. If you join, if you registered for today, you're on my distribution list. That's how I um, add people. So I'm going to send something because I'm going to be, um, hopefully next month, be chatting with you about some of the features of the new smart table. So you can go to our website and see that there's a new smart table. It's on the it flips on the on the front page. But that was we had a big um, campaign. Kevin had a new classmate, so and his new classmate was a new smart table. So they're going to be working. Um, you know, it's about the table. It's it's not a really about the table. It's about the experiences with the table. So the same things that you're learning today will be apply to the the moving forward. Um, if you have any technical needs, and, um, definitely reach out to our support department and be watching for that next date. I will post the information on my website. And if you're listening to this, if you need those resources, they will stay live so that you can go download those. And just thanks for giving up your afternoon. And um, I look forward to seeing you in March and watch your email. So if you have any questions, definitely give me a shout. Give, um, email me if you need a little extra help. I'd love to know what you need and how to help you. So with that, I'm going to sign off and have a great evening. See you next time.